It's uh, now time for uh, Henning to start with uh, what uh, I noticed to be a very uh, interesting uh, topic uh, on our mailing list, uh, respect to the integration with uh, Microsoft uh, Teams. Uh, everyone knows Henning is one of the developers that it's been a project for many, many years, more than one decade, uh, doing uh, a lot of contribution to the core, uh, being involved in management. Uh, so it's um, hard not to notice uh, who and what Henning did for the project so far. Henning, thank you for uh, uh, helping the project along these years and uh, coming to this event and sharing your experiences of integration of Camailo with um, Microsoft Teams. Your turn now. Okay, thank you, Daniel. Can you see my screen? Yes. Uh, perfect. Okay. Yeah, thank you for, for having me. Uh, thank you also for the good work you have done um, in organizing the event. Great that we can have it at least in, at least in this form. Perfect. So yeah, as you mentioned, uh, Microsoft Teams uh, has been uh, kind of a hot topic in the in the last uh, yeah half year, of course, because of the situation. A lot of businesses, a lot of people needed to move to remote, and uh, MS Teams was one of the solutions that, um, of course, many people used. So about the agenda, um, we only have uh, 30 minutes, so yeah, I need to. Uh, compress the content a bit to be able to cover everything. Um, yeah, I will uh, describe a bit the basics, um, more in a more general term, um, yeah, how to set it up, um, what is important, how to look like, uh, how to look for, um, what are common mistakes that people might make on the way to configure it, set it up, cover a bit of advanced topics, also show a bit where maybe there's still some room for improvement. Um, where, at least in my experience, um, we are not yet there. Um, yeah, and we'll close a bit with um, debugging yeah, information, maybe some, some pointers how to debug the whole, whole stuff. Um, as usual, of course, in the end, we will have a question and answer session. Um, so looking forward to questions there as well. Yeah, as Daniel said, I'm a long time with the Kamala project, started in 2007. Um, I'm a core developer of the project, worked in many, many different areas and um, also security related topics we discussed yesterday also briefly. <clears throat> I started two years ago a company called Gilava and also provide services here in that area. So of course, just a few generic words. Of course, I would prefer if everybody use open and federated system for their private and also business communication. That's of course, uh, Two for from for most of the people probably in this room, um, in our space, they would agree to that. I think. Um, but of course, you know how the situation is, especially in the business world. There's uh, Microsoft is um, the preferred um, supplier, software supplier here for several reasons. And of course, um, Kamali has a yeah project as a product that yeah is used a lot for interoperability solutions. We, of course, need to have an answer here. It's necessary to have an answer for that. So using Camilio as a session border controller for Teams, it's not particularly hard, but you need to have a solid knowledge in ZIP, in a Camilio, and also preferable in your, in your PBX or another back-to-back -back user agent. This is generally true for Camilio, and of course, as you know, <laughs> it's not uh, an, um, an project where you can just um, write up from the beginning, do highly complex stuff. You need to bit, uh, learn a bit about the standard, et cetera. But uh, especially for this area, it's important. If you don't uh, fulfill these requirements, my, my suggestion would be to, to either to get somebody to build it for you, or maybe looking for somebody, uh, for somebody to implement a commercial solution for you. There are also plug and play solutions, at least they promise it. Um, that you can use to interact with the teams. There's no secret source, I'm afraid. <laughs> you need to, one need to follow the available documentation on this topic and also spend a fair amount of uh, time in, in interop debugging. Of course, if you, because if you're um, 
your setup might be might be special. There might be some special um, things that you do. Okay, why people uh, want to do that? Um, of course, Microsoft Teams being a closed system by default only supports calls, audio and video calls in your own organization and to guests that you might invite into your, your meetings. If you want to call to the outside world, um, one option is to, use the, is to use the Microsoft Cloud offering. They call it calling plan. It's basically that you get some numbers and some minutes from them. Yeah, but it's not available in every country and you might have already a PCM provider in your in your company, you might, might have already a contract there for some years. You don't want to lose uh, less that. I want to. Want, you want to keep it. Maybe you might have some PBX functionality in your in your existing system. Maybe you provide services um, related to that to your customers. So you have some reasons to still you still want to use that. So of course Microsoft anticipated that, and they call it direct routing. How to interface. With the outside world, with the outside piece, then world, it's called direct routing. And you can connect uh, your Teams infrastructure um, or like the Teams infrastructure then um, to your piece, then network connection to basically place receive calls, audio calls. There's no video support right now, at least not I'm aware of. They might be offering it in the future, but right now it's only audio. And it works by directly connecting the session border controller to the Microsoft Cloud infrastructure. In the past, if you might have some experience with Skype, there, there were some hybrid options that you need to need to do um, or you could do. But in this case, it's just the cloud and you connect it to, to the session border controller in your premises on your data center. Yeah. So this is the basic setup. Um, so you have the Microsoft phone system on the one hand, you have the PSDN network, which we all know on the other hand, and sitting in between Camaleo and uh, some third party PBX, why this is necessary, I will explain later. And of course, you might have also some, some interfaces to the old world, some ATAs and uh, some adapter to the analog telephone systems, et cetera. Going uh, also cover, I want to also cover a bit the ups and downsides of this approach. Um, to the upsides of this uh, of using Camaleo, it's uh, yeah of course more flexible and um, might be also more secure as commercial offerings. Um, in many scenarios, um, it will be considerably cheaper as commercial SPCs. Commercial SPCs usually use some kind of uh, channel-based uh, model. Which of course, even which of course um, scale not well. If you go to higher uh, channel counts, um, you might already use Camaleo internally. Um, then of course makes sense to use it also for other purposes. And as we all know, Camaleo is of course more comp compatible to other parts of the voice over IP infrastructure. It's um, yeah being a highly flexible solution. On the downsides. Um, it's not certified from Microsoft. What does it mean? And so Microsoft set, certifies um, a set of session border controller as um, Microsoft, um, Microsoft um, hasn't done that yet for Camaleo. <laughs> In fact, if we want to do it, we need um, to approach Microsoft and also probably pay for that. Um, Camaleo is a highly flexible solution. It can be, of course, configured and adapted to many different scenarios. So it would be difficult, quite difficult to get a certification here. We would need to, yeah, to restrict it to a really certain use case. It's part of a product or whatever. It could be done from a company, but from an open source point of view, we don't think it's really a good idea. It's probably not, not meaningful to do. Camaleo will not support all Microsoft Teams modes yet, at least according to my experience. I'm interested to, to get some other uh, information from other people that might have tried different things. Um, and of course, it's not an integrated solution um, as there are some other appliances out there. How you set it up for Camaleo? Of course, you need a Camaleo server. I think this is obvious. 
Um, my suggestion would to start with the default configuration, or you might have already some configuration in house developed um, that might be adapted to your needs. You will need a PBX as well, um, or access to another back to back user agent. Why this is um, necessary, or at least recommend, recommended from my side. Like for both basic call scenarios, Camaleo will work just fine. But if you have uh, more complicated uh, call transfer scenarios, it's uh, really uh, beneficial to have a pro proper back-to-back -back user agent that can do the heavy lifting regarding the, well, not heavy lifting, but can do the abstraction um, regarding the um, yeah, call, um, transfer, refer, handling, and other stuff. These are topics which Kamalio, of course, is not that specialized in. It's, there might be PBX. For TLS, my recommendation would be to use Let's Encrypt. Um, you can also uh, you can uh, use it without any problems. It's um, not yet listed, I think, on um, from Microsoft as recommended certificate authority authority. But in my experience, it works uh, pretty well. Many people are using it. You can use a standard certificate. Um, you only need a Wildcat certificate if you want to go for multi-tenant. Yeah. You need to implement options handling. So you need to send options ping to Microsoft Teams and also answer them from answer to the options uh, pings that you get from Microsoft. It works both ways. And if you do that, then Microsoft will recognize your session border controller and uh, shows it as active in the console after you have set it up in the Microsoft um, configuration. I will come to that in a, in a moment. You need to um, specify the full qualified, domain, full qualified domain name of the server in the contact. Um, this is important for Microsoft that they can basically yeah, detect um, and yeah, your SPC and also find the correct uh, tenant in your Office 365, um, yeah, in, in their Office 365 infrastructure. Kamali also needs to route the calls to Teams with a proper record route header. This is another, yeah, some kind of security mechanism that Microsoft require in order to, to properly um, yeah, detect and route the calls. Microsoft um, has decided, um, which I like him, and in my opinion, this was a good move. Microsoft has decided to um, only go for encrypted calls, or encrypted media, and not only TLS, but um, also um, yeah, SRTP. So we need to set up an RTP engine also to encrypt, encrypt and decrypt the media going back and forth to teams and to infrastructure. So um, even if your infrastructure fully supports um, SRTP, my recommendation would be to use um, yeah, uh, RTP engine anyway, because um, yeah, Microsoft is not fully, it's not really flexible with regarding to codecs, and it's much easier that way to, to set it up. In these, in the areas where, that I mentioned, like sending the um, contact header, setting proper record road header, it's really important to use the full qualified domain name, not the IP. Otherwise, you will get up, you will um, get some issues in the call setup. The 200 OK or egg routing might not work, and uh, things like that. And then, of course, um, you need to use dispatcher to route the calls to Teams. Um, I didn't, uh, yeah, included all the configuration examples here into this um, presentation. Um, this is all um, available since uh, several months in my blog. I will have a link um, yeah, later in the presentation as well for that. OK, so far from the Camaleo side. From the Microsoft side, of course, you need a Microsoft Windows machine. This is also obvious. Um, it's uh, possible to do most of the um, configuration today in the um, Teams admin console over the web interface. But for some, in some areas, you need to do it as well with um, PowerShell and the Skype for Business plugin. This is a sp special plugin you can download from the Microsoft site. For testing, it's also recommended to have a native Teams client. This makes it much easier yeah, basically to test um, the scenarios to test your, your system. 
Regarding Microsoft licenses, you need to have Office 365 E3 or E5. E3, you need an additional add-on. It's called a phone system in English, telephone system in Deutsch. Um, probably another names in other languages. Um, in the past, some other licenses worked, um, but this was the last um, information that I got also from the documentation. This should work. Um, the licenses that worked for me in the past, the different licenses, now they don't work anymore. You need to register the domain of your um, yeah, SPC, the full qualified domain name, basically, in your tenant, especially if it's different from your tenant. Um, it works um, in the Teams, uh, and so in the Office 365 admin console. You need to provide some kind of DNS um, authentication similar to, for example, Let's Encrypt, I do it. You need to um, yeah, insert some yeah, secrets in your DNS to prove that you own the DNS, and then Microsoft will add the DNS name to, to, the, to your tenant, basically. You need to register the SPC, SPC with the PowerShell, or you're also on the Team Admin Console. You need to assign a phone number to a test user. If you use phone numbers, it's important to use um, yeah, this international for format with a plus, like in Germany, plus, four, nine, one, two, three, et cetera. Microsoft requires that you have a plus here. Also, if you receive calls from the PSTN that might be in another format, you need to do some, some normalization here to, to send it in the correct format to, to Teams. After you have done all this configuration in the Microsoft and have set up Camario, of course. In the previous step, um, yeah, your SBC should be active in the Teams admin console. It looks like that. <laughs> what we see here is the um, is the um, yeah the parallel calls. It's in German. Just did a screenshot a few minutes before this talk. We see the parallel calls. Um, we did some tests. Like a colleague did some tests. We see the full qualified domain name of the SBC. You see that it's active. We see um, um, if there's a TLS issue, it will also show up here. So this is the main the main overview where you can see and um, yeah notice if your SPC is active. It will take some time um, after you started the Camario that it shows up as active. Um, depending on the load of the of the backend, it might even take some hours. So don't uh, don't you know, we need to be a bit patient. Um, yeah. It's a cloud infrastructure, you can't, it's a black box, you can't look into it. You need to be patient. <laughs> regarding, the, regarding the PBX, you need to set up a PSN trunk in your PBX. Um, as mentioned before, of course, you could use the UAC module um, in Camalio to use that. But in my experience, it's much, uh, much more reliable regarding user agents, regarding different scenarios in the teams, call transfers. Um, to use a PBX to set up your PSTN trunk there. You need to um, create an association between Camaldo and the PBX, obviously, to allow calls going back and forth. And of course, routing the calls to your PBX. If you're using the default configuration, you can use it, uh, for example, with the PSTN route, which is in the default config. And um, of course, uh, if, if, course, if there are incoming calls from uh, the uh, PSDN coming in over the PBX, you need to route it to the Camario, of course. So for basic scenarios, this is enough. And uh, more integration can be, of course, done in later steps, like before handling, call transfer, scenarios, etc. So I said you should be able to, yeah, basically test the basic call scenarios, incoming calls, and outgoing calls. Um, yeah, if it works. You should ver verify the signalization with the usual debugging tools. Um, you can use SNGrab, other other um, other tools, of course, that you all know and might already use. As I mentioned before, configuration examples, also some PowerShell snippets, can be all found in my blog. I um, have a link in the last slide of this presentation. So far to the basic stuff, now to a bit more advanced topics. Um, also to show what's possible, what's still open right now. So basically there are different modes 
how you can set up a session border controller um, for Teams. There are different modes regarding call transfer and also different modes regarding the media flow. So regarding call, call transfer, um, the easiest way to do is did to do it, I'm sorry, it's uh, without refer. This way, Microsoft will just, uh, yeah, um, put, just create a new invite if you do a call transfer with the replace option and uh, terminate the old call and invite the new call. Microsoft will, will yeah, in this option will do the call transfer internally. Just to illustrate it a bit, I also yeah, included some, some information from the Microsoft page here. Um, gave also the link on the left side. We have here a standard call setup, as you all know, nothing, uh, nothing uncommon. And then Microsoft will just set up a new invite. Um, yeah, do the normal call setup for this invite um, with, re with a referred by and a replace. And then um, yeah, the call will be. Um, the new call will be take place and the old call will be um, basically byte ended. The more advanced and also recommended method is to use the refer method. And um, here, Microsoft will just send a refer to the SPC and expect the session border controller, session border controller in this picture means, of course, the Camaleo, to handle the transfer fully. So the Carmelio, or like the PBX behind it, in this case, um, would need to process the refer and um, yeah, create the new invite to invite the new participant, and um, then do the do the notifies um, during the refer process. The notify for the 100, 100, 180, 183 if if there's one, and the 200, and do the refer handling all internally. As I said, this is the recommended met method, and it's also yeah the recommended method if you want to benefit from additional or like this additional integration into your to, into your existing PBX. Um, if you don't need it, um, then you don't need to implement it, of course. Um, if you block the refer in the signalization, um, then Microsoft will not send you a refer and. It will do everything by by him by themselves in their, their infrastructure. Regarding the media processing, there are also two different modes. The one is called media bypass, the other non-media bypass. In the media bypass mode, um, or there, this is the mode where all media flows between the Teams endpoint and the SPC. This is handy, especially if you have like a more geographic distributed yeah, scenario where you have maybe, maybe some office in Germany, maybe an office in New York, in the States, and you don't want that all the media goes over the um, Teams infrastructure, but you might uh, have the, might, might to keep the media uh, local, like that the US media stays in the US and the German media stays in, in Germany. And there's a non-media bypass mode. Um, here the RTP traffic flows between the Teams client, the media processor, and the SPC. Media processor in this context means the basically the, the media processing entity in the Office 365 cloud. So with Camaleo RTP engine, so far, right now, in my experience, you can only use the non-media bypass mode. Um, yeah, this might be an area where we had some some more research and more um, <laughs> debugging might be might be needed. How does it look like? I also included two pictures here. Um, this is a non-media bypass. Um, we see just one media stream here um, for the call forking to the different call team clients. It's also from the Microsoft documentation. The Microsoft documentation is actually quite good. There's a lot of um, diagrams. Um, 
can be yeah, it's, it's all managed in GitHub. So Microsoft has I think has come come a long way here regarding documentation and and openness in the documentation. Um, and uh, this is the media bypass mode. You see two media uh, streams here. Um, you find more information if you're interested um, about the, all the details. Um, also, of course, in the, in the link below. So, so far so to, to the two different modes for the call transfer and also the media handling. Yeah, um, I will probably do some more research in this area, but again, um, of course, I'm interested what have other people done here. Um, if you are um, looking into these call transfer scenarios, you can um, yeah, make sure that you test it really um, thoroughly. Um, test um, unattended transfer and attended transfer, they might behave differently, at least in my um, experience. Um, also, if you do like, um, you can do uh, like a conference with three or more participants, make sure you test that as well. This might also behave different than a simple call transfer. Um, yeah. If you have special requirements um, regarding like call forwarding information in the SIP signalization or also caller identity, like peer asserted identity topics, you can configure that also in with PowerShell. Um, one more one easy topic, but still I think it has a lot of visibility to the users. Um, by default, you will uh, have some uh, music on hold from the Microsoft Cloud, and this can be, of course, also replaced. Um, and you can use your PBX if you already have one. Um, of course, you can use that as well. So this can be all done by, by PowerShell. Again, keep in mind, if you change something here, it will take some time, some minutes, in some cases, even some hours. Yeah, Microsoft has an interesting way of speaking zip. It's really easy to to recognize. Um, just uh, put some one one message here just to to show to highlight it a bit. It's really it speaks zip in capital letters. Um, this makes it easy to recognize in a trace. Um, yeah, and it's uh, speaking zip over HTTPS port. This is really interesting. Um, you will get some reinvite after the call was set up in many cases to, to do reinvite regarding that one. Um, yeah, so far, uh, I think for this, for the example, um, I omitted the SDP here just to, to not to, um, yeah, have too much information. Have a look to the watch. I think I need to hurry up a bit. Um, yeah, to my last part um, regarding debugging, the most difficult part obviously is of course to um, yeah to debug the TLS encrypted communication that goes from two teams. Um, for the other stuff, of course, you can use usual uh, tools, SNGrep, TCP dump, etc. For TLS, you can use zip dump, zip trace. In Camaleo, you can use Homer if you have it set it up already in your lab. And there's also the, the possibility to use the core extension module with the network event routes to, to have more yeah, insight into the message handling. Sometimes Microsoft will give you hints in, in the messages. If you, for example, if you are missing an acknowledge, you will get a, a helpful message that even spells you out the reason why they are not happy. Sometimes they will also inform you if some headers are missing or some headers are wrong, for example, regarding contact record route. But in some cases, unfortunately, Microsoft will just not reply to your messages, especially in TLS errors. This is really difficult and black box debugging a lot of fun. I spent many, many hours looking into traces, trying to figure out how to make it work. But yeah, that's the way it is. <laughs> As I said, the Microsoft documentation is really extensive and helpful on this whole topic. Um, and the note, even commercial SPCs, there's some stories for my customers, 
which I had um, in for projects in this area. Um, even the, com the commercial SPC has have some problems in the past. And if you do set up some info, some setup for yourself, documentation and test protocols are really important. I don't have to tell you that, but especially for like a bit more complex projects in this area, this is uh, really necessary. Yeah, so that's all from my side. Thank you for the attention. You find all the configuration in the link in the middle on the page. And if you have any questions, just uh, yeah, have a look to the contact information below. Just let me know. Thank you. Thank you, Henning, uh, for a very interesting uh, summary of uh, what it's uh, uh, necessary to troubleshoot uh, and to be aware of uh, for integration with um, MX Teams. I think you have a blog. I'm not sure if a blog post. I'm not sure if you put the link on it with more like the snippets and so on. Uh, yeah, I will just post it also in the. You can update it, uh, upload it to Kamai Award during the next phase. Uh, should be on Scalatan.d, right? Maybe you already. Yeah. I think the, the link the link is in the presentation, and I will also post the link in the uh, in the um, in the matrix. Okay, so I saw a question on YouTube channel, but I think you already addressed it. Um, do you delete refer from a allow header, or did you implement refer processing on Kamaiyo side? But I think you had something with uh, PBX at some point, and also. Not sure if you have a YouTube channel open. This is from YouTube channel, no, not from Matrix. Uh, can you repeat? I'm sorry. So, uh, repeating, do you delete refer from allow header? Yes. Or do you... Yes. Oh. Okay, and then some remarks about licensing that uh, E3 requires audio conferencing plus phone system. This is just for uh, the audience, not a question. Uh, if someone wants to know more about uh, licensing policies of... Um, um, I think you need, I think you need the phone system and um, Audio conference is for um, for another thing. I think you need phone system, but um, at least in my test it worked. <laughs> then a question from the Matrix chat: How do you manage advertise address for multi-tenant systems? I mean, for multi-tenant systems, I mean it's a bit bit difficult to explain it like in in, a, in one sentence. But for multi-tenant systems, I mean the the preferred way with Microsoft. Recommend us to have the carrier domain, and uh, then uh, of course have um, yeah domains um, below this white card domain to to use that. Yeah. And um, if you look to the Microsoft documentation, what they specify and what they what they do is they look only for the for the contact header regarding this uh, lookup for the proper tenant. So you need to need to insert the proper proper contact header for the for the tenants. So it's probably to answer it, try to answer it in a in a quick way. Okay, so uh, probably it's time to switch to the next speaker, not to uh, bring too much delay. I'm sure Henning will be around here later, or if not, uh, ask on mailing list and others uh, may be able to answer. Uh, thank you, Henning, for uh, your time and uh, a very informative uh, presentation. Thank you.